Hi everyone, my name is Lloyd Marino and the short film you're about to watch is a short documentary that I put together for a communications course that I'm taking at the University of New Mexico. Throughout the film, I'm comparing bicycle commuter culture with single occupancy car commuter culture. And some of the things that I look at are the communication that happens between commuters during their commute and the interactions that they have with other people. One of the goals of this, this film that I'm putting together was to provide a resource for people who are considering using their bike to get to work. With bike commuting, there are a lot of questions that people have, there's a lot of reservations that people have, and so what I do throughout the film is I talk one-on-one -on -one with people, and basically what I wanted to do was bring the answers to you. So to start things off, I began the film by looking at some of the issues that come along with our current car commuting culture, and some of the things that I found were very interesting. We forget that streets are public spaces uh, that have been overtaken by the car. Um, they're sold to us as, as if we purchase a car, we'll somehow purchase freedom. But what you realize when you purchase the car is that you've kind of done the opposite. You've purchased yourself a position in traffic. This is a kind of a way to reclaim our public spaces and use it for more human purposes. Most car trips are within a five mile radius or so of your house. When you live in a place like Albuquerque that is urban sprawl, uh, and you can't go anywhere without your car, what you realize is that your car ends up being an incredibly expensive wheelchair, and people no longer walk anywhere. How many people kill each other crashing into each other because uh, they have no choice but to drive where they want to go. Urban sprawl though, I mean, how, much, how many resources have we cemented over? How much wildlife have we killed? Um, how many people die of, uh, of health problems related to a lack of exercise. For cities to be functional in, on a more human level, you need to be building up instead of out. So taller buildings as opposed to um, longer streets. In a large city, you're so used to the sound of automotive traffic. It's so invasive, yet you almost don't even realize um, that you can't escape the sound of cars. Uh, when they finally do, stop the cars for an hour or two on a major boulevard. It just gives you the idea of what a city could be like and how human a city could be. The silence, the quiet is almost overwhelming. And I think that you can't talk about social ills and not talk about driving, urban sprawl, and the car culture that we have. So to start off my research, I decided to talk to car commuters and find out what they think about their commute. Well, school is pretty far away from me, so it's um, a pretty long commute. So I drive because it seems like a really long distance. Because I have to go to work, and I have never thought of any other options. Uh, it's too far to walk, and uh, that's pretty much the only way. I don't like taking the bus. I asked car commuters, what do you think about driver communication, and how do you interact with other drivers? Sometimes there's aggressive drivers, you can spot them when they're cutting in and out. If I pull up next to someone at a stoplight, I don't look over at them, and I don't know why. I just feel like I'm safer if I don't make eye contact. i say most of driver communication is pretty negative. Um, people are just going, getting from one point to another. Well, I try to stay out of people's way, so I try to make communication as happy as possible. Wave to people. <laughs> Uh, there's turn signals and then the occasional rude person because I drive slow, so you know you get that every now and then. Well, it's it's never good. Someone's driving their little like Prius or whatever they have, then they're talking on their phone. They're going like thirty and a fifty lane or something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never like someone stops and stuff. Like you look over and then you're like, "How oh, was your day?" or anything. It's, it's always just like, you know. I also asked them, would you be willing to consider riding your bike to work instead of driving your car? I, I would. It would just, I'd need some info like to see how far I would have to go and how long it would take and everything. I, I am going to try it at least a couple of days a week. I also talked to car commuters about the challenges they face every day during their commute. This is what they had to say. 
but the traffic I would say is the biggest problem. I've tried different routes and it doesn't matter which way I go, it's always bad in the evenings. I think just the overall oil changes, the main maintenance of it all, is it gets on the pricey side. So in order to get people thinking about trying using their bicycle to commute to work, I wanted to find out what types of reservations do people have about riding their bike to work? Uh, probably just the traffic and uh, other drivers. That's probably my biggest concern. Um, the safety issues and then it's just a long distance. I don't really know what paths I have major highways to cross. One of the big questions that I had for car commuters was, do you really enjoy your commute to work every day? I do not enjoy anything about my commute. Um, I, I put it off as long as I can. I'm coming home, I turn up my music and just try to distract myself. It is not what I would call enjoyable. I've learned to accept it. I put in my music and just get there. I also wanted to ask our commuters, do you feel dependent on your car to do your shopping, go to work, and to run simple errands? I am. I think my lifestyle, I depend on my car. Yes, because I live so far away and my neighborhood isn't safe. The next step was to talk to cyclists and to ask them about their commute. So the first question that I asked cyclist commuters was, why do you use your bike to get to work and school? Well, there's a couple reasons. I am pretty hyper. I sit at a desk all day. I get my exercise in and I can sit then. If I exercise before work, then I'm able to sit there all day. Well, for me, it's a it's a close commute. I only live a mile away, so it's actually quicker for me to ride my bike than it is to, to drive. I can beat the traffic with my bike. Well, it's a great uh, multitask. I get exercise while I'm either working or wasn't driving, so get a good two-hour workout for only an extra hour of time. I got a bike, and uh, I got, a, got away from the parking problem at UNM, four miles a day, and in the first year I lost 20 pounds without even trying. So it was, it was pretty good, and so I've been biking ever since. I don't, I don't know, I've just always liked to ride my bike, you know, and driving a car just doesn't seem to make sense in Albuquerque. A bicycle, totally, I never drive a car. You never drive a car? I never drive a car. I do stick to the bike path, so I'm really grateful for the, you know, excellent bike path system we have in Albuquerque. Mainly exercise, but, you know, nowadays I've started riding it other places just because. Physical fitness. Okay. I, uh, I have chronic leukemia and uh, staying physically fit is a very important part of keeping going. I ride bikes because it's as much fun now uh, as it was when I was eight years old. But the difference, of course, is that I don't have to be home in time for dinner. It's a no-stress commute. I especially love the spring and the summer and the fall. Just that early morning, not having to worry about being in the car, get your head together before work, transition. Come out and bike for a good workout to get out here in nature, see how, actual, how pretty New Mexico really is, get away from the city. Now, for those of you car commuters that are having reservations about using your bike to get to work and school, I've got a little bit of advice from some experienced cyclists just for you. Uh, try as much as possible not to take main streets like Indian School, Gerard. I'd say begin with one day a week. Begin even maybe with just going one way. You know, catch a ride home with somebody. You have to look at it like this is my exercise. I don't have to go home now and do go to the gym, whatever because you killed two birds with one stone. I wouldn't worry until you get all the perfect equipment. I just get whatever you got and get out there and do it once. I would tell them to uh, get a bicycle that is designed for commuting. It's more upright, maybe not a standard road bike like a hybrid. I take a bike 101 class actually so they've got some familiarity with how to handle riding in traffic. There's a couple of things I would recommend is uh, uh, don't worry if you're, if you're out of shape. It, it, it will come naturally. Just two months on the bicycle and you're there. 